Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth here. It is Tuesday, the 14th day of June. Yes, I know on my uh, What's Up today I said it was Monday, but it's Tuesday, so I'm, I'm fine. Tuesday, the 14th of June, 2022, and it's time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. You see, normally I do the long discussions on Monday, so that was what was on the brain, because it'll be a little bit longer today. Tuesday is the new Monday, so good to have you with me. Let's get on with it, show you what we got out there so we're not too lengthy here, all right? In the Atlantic Basin in the Southwest Caribbean, Invest Area 93L, we'll get to this in more detail in a minute, and then, of course, in the Eastern Pacific, we have Tropical Storm Blas out here to the south of the Mexican coastline, top winds, and not too strong, 45 miles per hour, and as you can see, it is expected to stay well off the Mexican coastline here. A couple of islands out here that could get some peripheral impacts. It might even become a hurricane at some point. And uh, by the way, this is our interactive tracking map on the Hurricane Track Insider site, part of our Patreon access. It's crowdfunded, crowd-built, crowd-sourced, and uh, it's really neat. This is what we do with it. Um, but yeah, you can zoom in and see what's going on, where the track is supposed to be. A lot of maps do that. I get that, but I'm proud that we have that on our site. Anyway, the bottom line is you folks with interests in Mexico, it could be some swells that get generated from this that even make their way up towards the Baja eventually. So if you're in Cabo, you might have a few additional waves to catch down there and elsewhere. So we'll watch and see as this goes on, but no real threat to land areas currently. Looking at the infrared satellite imagery, the loop here, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits today, uh, most of the eastern Atlantic dominated by Saharan air, dry sinking air, still too early in the season to really worry about things that far out. So let's shift our attention to 93L down here. I'm trying to draw an arrow. That didn't work out too well, did it? Let's try this. Down here in the Southwest Caribbean, this is another system in the Eastern Pacific, and there is BLOSS there also in the Eastern Pacific. It is interesting, ladies and gentlemen, this area, BLOSS included, is just part of this large gyre, just this uh, incubator, if you will, of tropical activity, a lot of energy, spin in the atmosphere, some low-level westerlies coming in, and then you have the easterlies coming in from the Caribbean, and that sort of juxtaposition with each other generates this big gyre, this large turning, and then you have pieces of energy that try to consolidate off of that, bundle that tropical energy, the latent heat in the, in the upper ocean heat content there. It's all trying to happen, but it's complex. you got the land mass in between of Central America, so nothing is happening happening rapidly, which is a good thing, but it is complex. There's no real easy answer. Uh, and as I'll show you on the GFS output in a minute, we might see something develop here and then eventually slide its way back east as this might try to develop and slide its way northwest, the two of them kind of rotating around each other in what is called the Fui Fujiwara effect. Crazy stuff. All right, so a high-res satellite animation uh, of BLAS. Now, normally, you can look at this tail that's coming into it, and you say, wow, that's a, uh, a pretty good sign of intensification there. And I say normally because, well, it's got a small circulation. We'll have to see how well this feeds it. And when you have these small circulations, these small cores, they can strengthen real quick, and then they can, they can also fall apart really quick. Notice, too, the decent upper-level outflow along the periphery here, the clouds fanning out in a clockwise fashion instead of upper level winds cutting across the system and shearing these clouds away that's not happening so it's in a pretty good environment the water temperatures however once you get out here uh, a little farther away these cool off out here and it, it's a more stable environment and that's why BLOSS should start to weaken once it's out there moving on along to 93L uh, again a high resolution satellite shot not ideal weather conditions overall for this to develop. There's some spin down there, a little bit, a little bit of rotation, uh, some deep thunderstorm activity, a lot of moisture, a lot of energy, but it's not consolidating rapidly. Sometimes you get that energy that comes off of the mountains here of Columbia, and that helps to feed in. The trades are blowing in here. You can really see those through those, uh, those low cloud streaks, the trade winds. So there's potential, but it's not really extreme obviously that's why this is only 40 percent um, the jury is still out the GFS has been pretty aggressive with it but overall I mean a big key to this is 
does it form and then just kind of hug the coast and go into Nicaragua? Or is it able to stay just offshore and pinwheel around off the coast of Nicaragua and Honduras to the north, making its way up to uh, the Gulf of Honduras, which is right here? You know, that's the key. Does it come up here and pivot around? Does it go right over land and just be a big rainmaker? And I say big rainmaker, let's not forget, you're going to hear me do this a lot, rain is an impact, and too much rain uh, can be a really, really big problem. Look at what's going on up at Yellowstone. Are you kidding me? That's from rainfall. It's not from a tropical system, but let's don't let's give rain the credit it deserves for being a troublemaker sometimes. We need it to survive, but boy, it can turn against you when there's too much of it. That is for sure. Vorticity time. All right, I love this map. I really do. Uh, to me, it is just such a great tool to see what's coming together and what's staying pulled apart like salt water taffy or whatever. And you can clearly see where is Bloss. I'll give you a second. Where's Bloss on this map? Reach up on your device and it's interactive now. Touch your device. Where's Bloss? It's right there. If you chose this, you chose wisely to quote from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Remember that line? from what was it that night or whatever that said that you chose wisely that is the area of vorticity nice and sort of rounded off as, as much as it can be for not being a super intense storm that's what you look for and it's just so easy I mean come on this is uh, one of the reasons why this is my favorite product I think in determining where something is located how it's or uh, how its health is doing I look at this like an x-ray or CT, where you can look through, you know, the soft tissue, whatever, of like a human, and see what's going on inside. This helps us to look under that hood, so to speak. There's Bloss down there. That's what we look for. This is starting to kind of concentrate a little bit, so that's trying to get us act together. Small in aerial coverage, but this is not outdone, right? That's still trying its own. But there's all this competition going on, and only so much energy available. Uh, to feed any developing systems. Meanwhile, across the tropical Atlantic, nothing, nothing to worry about out there. Just a few little areas of energy, but they're very weak overall. Uh, and look up here. You can even see the outline almost of the ridge. Um, there's no vorticity underneath it because it's sinking air. It's this big mountain of air in, in three dimensions, and it's just clearing everything out. It's like a big air pump. You pump up that bike tire, right, and it gets hot, that's that. It's sinking air, compressing air. Pretty amazing. This map, I love it. And then what's happening on the periphery, just real quick? Storms. Look at that. There's all your energy on the periphery, like the ring of fire, as they say. Very stormy along the periphery of that huge ridge in the eastern U.S. All right, moving on along. Anomalies. Wow. I mean, wow. The Atlantic Basin, are you kidding me? That's very warm in the main development region relative to average. Warmed up a little bit. So we're not in this strong La Nina, and I'm telling you, I got a feeling just based on, it's not just a feeling, all right, because that's not really a thing. Some people believe in it, hunches, feelings, whatever, but, you know, there's some science behind that. You have that feeling based on experience, and my experience is something that's a real shock to the system, like a major strong La Nina heading towards that strong La Nina, like 2020, last year especially, sort of overwhelms the system when you get weird, unpredictable things happening. In this situation, we're kind of gradually warming things back up, coming out of the strong La Nina, and the Atlantic has been gradually warming. Those are the signals that I've seen in the past that gives us uh, a really headache of a hurricane season. Very warm water relative to average. I won't say very. Got to temper it. You know, make sure I choose my words wisely. Warm water relative to average is significant enough uh, across the eastern Atlantic. And then you have this cold area up here in the subtropics. That is pretty close to a classic look. We've talked about this often. It is still there. That's my point. All right, actual temperatures, not anomalies. Very warm in and around South Florida. Very warm in and around the shallower waters of the shelf areas of the north central Gulf Coast. Everything else gradually warming up, as you would expect 28, 29, almost 30 degrees Celsius. Yes, water temperatures are on their way up. They will continue to do so right on into probably September even. Uh, there's a lag, even though the, the summer will peak and we'll start losing daylight after about late June, early July. 
it still takes a while for the waters to warm up. It's like when you turn off the stove, there's still energy being input into the pot of water, and it continues to warm. It's not instant. Off the mid-Atlantic in vicinity, uh, 26, 27, even a 28 Celsius hanging out right there east of Hatteras and Rodanthe. But Wrightsville Beach, not quite. Still about 78, maybe 79. Pamlico Sound is not bad, the southwest part of it. It's getting there. We're getting there, especially with this heat that we've had lately. Uh, I like it when the water is about 82, 83 or higher myself. All right, GFS time, the 12Z run from today. Uh, what are we looking for? Let's watch this, this, and there's Bloss over there. And I'll put this into motion using the slider and just see how these things pivot along. Bloss exits stage left or screen left or whatever. And then in the Atlantic, you see 93L down there. It's like, ooh, I want to bump into the uh, southern Hun uh, Nicaraguan coastline, but maybe not. And it pivots up around. That is going to be the key. It really is. I mean, it's not hard to figure out. Where it does that sort of swing around will determine how much land it interacts with or not. Less land will probably mean a stronger system that might have to be dealt with later in Belize or elsewhere along the Yucatan Peninsula. So we'll just have to wait and see. I don't know for sure what's going to happen. By day five, you see it cuts across, gets into the Bay of Campeche, and just the general flow is to push everything, let's use a color that we can see better, is to push everything across and kind of bury it into Central America. Anyway, this interesting gyre down here, fairly persistent, and eventually one of these is going to pop loose and cause some trouble uh, for somebody. Now, I think this is a sign of what's going to be coming. Speaking of signs, old Ben Knoll telling us more, I don't want to call it bad news because it's just news. I mean, he's just putting this information out. It's science. You know, what does the science tell us? The science is telling us comparing the velocity potential, the way the upward motion in the atmosphere is, rising motion, which is good for tropical development, favorable for it, or sinking motion, which squashes tropical development generally, is more favorable on the Euro guidance this year than the last two years. That is saying something. It really is. So take that to heart. That's another example here. Not doom and gloom more so than, hey, it's facts here. Get ready. Be, be on top of this. Pay more attention. Maybe get that extra gas can or two. Get that generator serviced. You know, just do something. Don't just sit back and say, ah, oh, more bad news. Everything sucks. Do something. All right. Everything doesn't suck. Everything's awesome. Remember the Lego guy? What was that Chris Pratt that played that character? Seriously, it's not sucky. It's science. And it tells us we need to be ready. So take that uh, as a positive thing. Um, also, science tells us that's the long term that we just looked at the whole season. But my good friend, well, I've never met him, but he's been good to me on the Internet, Yakov, saying uh, uh, in his tweet here that the weeklies from the Euro, these weeklies that get put out, the forecast, all kinds of data is out there. You just got to know where to find it. And someone like Yakov here knows where to find it. And all I got to do is show it to you in a tweet. It makes my job easier. The next period of time here, days 15 through 21, looks like a fairly active period predicted by the Euro and its overall forecast mechanism. Um, too much to get into here, like how? How does it know this? Well, it doesn't know. It's a prediction. And the probability is, as Yakov mentions, that they suggest the weeklies above normal activity late June into early July. They highlight two main areas of interest, the main development region, um, and uh, off the U.S. East Coast, that's the first time period, when this is probably more of your MCS, your mesoscale convective systems that come off. That's that gyre thing that I was telling you about. But then, as we get farther out into time, further out into time, whatever it is, um, wow, that's the signal. That's what we're seeing where all that upward motion over here spits out these tropical waves. They get energized. The water's warm, anomalously so. The puzzle pieces are starting to come together and the models are starting to see it even in the extended range. This is tremendous because we can't be taken by surprise. You know, we can still have rapidly developing storms close to land. Ida, Harvey, Michael, whatever, I get it. But this is helpful in knowing what could be coming up through the weeklies. All right? 
Uh, last thing before I let you go, this is also very, very important. What is this? This particular diagram shows us basically the wind anomalies, uh, the zonal winds at about 5,000 feet, and all of those reds you see in there correspond longitudinally. Let's zoom in on this. Let's get rid of me so we can focus on this. Longitudinally, 60 degrees west right here, over to about 120 uh, zero degrees longitude, of course, is the prime meridian that goes through London. But, you know, a little bit uh, east of 60 west, you know, around the coast of Africa, maybe somewhere over here, roughly, and then out to 120, what does all that red mean? That red means a slowing of the trades or maybe even a reversal in the wind flow across the deep tropics. So what does that translate into English? That means a warming period, A, for the Atlantic Basin, more warming because the trades aren't going to be screaming across the tropical Atlantic, and B, those westerly winds and those low levels down in the deep tropics run into those easterlies and you get spin. It helps relative vorticity to get started. So that's the window coming up. When is it? It goes through June 22nd. That's that time scale over there on screen left. I think that's how this works. <laughs> um, but the bottom line, it's busy. It's going to get busier. Uh, and we already have 93L, I mean, all these things trying to develop, and it's fighting climatology. As climatology starts to get more favorable, and then these parameters set in, we're going to have a busy time ahead. So, I mean, you got to take it seriously. Everything else going on in the world, gas prices are nuts, you know? I mean, maybe get a couple of extra cans now so you don't have to worry about it. Skip the Five Guys or the movie, or oh, there's some good movies out, but... You know, if, if money's an issue, you know, you got to think about these things. You got to have that gas to evacuate. Got to have gas for the generator. You got to have the water. Maybe a couple of these extra things that you're spending some money on that you don't necessarily need to, you know, budget towards a little bit of hurricane preparedness. Um, that makes sense, you know, because not everybody is able to go out and spend two grand on everything that they need at the drop of a hat. I get that. So just trying to help you here. I mean, I've got experience with this. We know what can happen when things get hectic and crazy and you're stressed. Everything else going on, we don't need more stress. So at least we have the foresight here of what might be coming. It's not there yet. I'm not panicking. We're just looking and we're seeing in the outlook part of hurricane outlook and discussion, we might have some stuff to deal with here in the coming weeks. All right. That is it for me for today. By the way, you say, what's that background? I'm in Orlando. Let me just come on real quick. Uh, picking up some equipment for the hurricane season, meeting with a colleague of mine down here. And so that's that's the hotel. Came down to Orlando, brought my wife and three kids with me. They're enjoying the pool outside. It is hot as blazes. Uh, hot everywhere in the deep south anyway. But that's, that's what the background is. Uh, picking up a new computer that we have put together. Uh, some folks helping to crowdfund that. Mike, uh, the gentleman that helped me put it together, uh, just so smart and so helpful. We're going to have a great new computer for video editing, for live stream stuff, uh, doing the updates, and it's going to take a couple of weeks to get everything working at my place. It is massive, too. I'm taking it back home. I wasn't going to ship it. No, i got to bring it home personally. It's too important. Uh, but that's what I'm doing down here. All right? All right. Now let's exit. Have a good rest of your Tuesday. Tuesday is the new Monday. Uh, I am Mark Stutter. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow morning on What's Up in the Tropics. I'll talk to you then.